So g'day and welcome back to Gumade Coins and Banknotes. My name is Glenn and don't worry about stuff in the background. But if anyone knows where I can find this from the Baghdad foodery, uh, that would be great. This is delicious. Don't worry about my rocks, they're for my geology channel. But today we have an unpacking of uh, this envelope. So the address is here, so that's off the actual site. But these stamps are interesting. So this is from the Freedom Country. So United States of Freedom. And you can see there's no price on the stamps. So obviously, you buy these stamps, you can use it in like 5, 10 years, 100 years time. And this one's 2023. And the global. So 2222. Two, 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 two. Whatever. So anyway, this is... Hopefully it's something I've been waiting for for quite a long time. Okay, so this is why uh, stamp collecting is dying because not a lot of people get stamps anymore. Not a lot of people are not interested. Full of just like nerds, anyway, uh, who actually collected stamps. But I'll keep those. So nice, well packaged. This is the way I package stuff as well. Um. You also leave gaps, so you can actually open, a, yeah, you can open it fairly easily. And, looks like, it's not the package I was looking for. So it contains one coin, obviously you probably identify it as a florin. Uh, and this one's, yeah, 1943 florin. So... This one I think I got for about $11, $12. And that pretty much is bullion value. I can't remember what the mintage is. I don't have my coin book out. But this one is probably EF condition. So it's actually quite nice. It doesn't look like it's been cleaned. I don't see any scratches in the background. But obviously I didn't see too much circulation. And the scratches you see there are more indicative of uh, circulation wear because they're just all over the place. If they're clean, they're usually in one direction. And it looks like a flow stone. Okay, so we have quite a lot of banknotes in this lot. So the idea is to try and cut it without actually cutting the banknotes. Or cutting yourself. That nearly went through my bloody hand. Ah, oh, well, that would have been fun. Blood pissing out all over the banknotes. Okay, so what we have here is quite a variety of banknotes. So the first one we have is a five mark from Germany. This was issued by the Allies, so pretty much France, UK, United States and Russia after they um, pretty much... An, destroyed the Germany in 1945 they issued similar designs in France it's got pinholes uh, it Italy uh, and Japan they did issue these type of banknotes in Austria but they are a different style and the Russians also issued their ones like for Czechoslovakia Hungary and a few other countries so, five marks. Yeah, it's probably about five to ten dollars. Although the pinholes will probably reduce the value. And if there should be an F somewhere, yeah, down here, there's an F. So this one is printed in the United States. If it's missing that, then it's printed by the Russians. Okay, then the next bank note we have, I've been. Trying to get this set, so this consists of uh, Centavo's banknotes. This is Centavo, half peso. They also issued another 50 Centavos. I don't think it has a half peso on it. And these were printed in, I think, 1958. Uh, to alleviate the coin shortage that they have. And they issued these in, from memory, 5, 10, 20, and 50 Centavos. Along with the other banknotes. And these are probably worth about 5 to $10. Not too hard to get. Um, to get them in better condition, it's probably going to be more, a bit more expensive. 
once again this is two pinholes so obviously these been stapled together with staples for some reason and the date on it is 1949 so that's a frozen date of the actual bank so that's actually quite nice and that's going in my collection i haven't got that okay the next one we have is a 1968 banknote from Kuwait this is a half dinner and all the banknotes pre-1991 were demonetized because of the Iraqi invasion of Kuwait so these are no longer legal tender the half dinner should be easier to get and but the highest one I think is the 10 or 20 dinars they are a bit harder to get in 1968, uh, this is probably worth at least 10 times, probably equivalent to like 5 to 10 dinars now in purchasing power. So we have some structures in Kuwait. We've got the coat of arms. Here's an eagle with a flag. Looks like we have, that's probably UV light. Or it could be, yeah, I would say so. The watermark is... Just a, a boat, I think they call it a doe. And on the back, we just have a port seam. So, looks like these are three shafts, probably to contain oil. It's a major oil exporter. And that one's probably at least five to ten dollars. And I don't have that one. So, a banknote I do have is a Denmark 10 Krona. These sell for about twenty dollars. And if you want to know the date, Today is these two here. So this is 1967, and it has Hans Christian Andersen and a indigenous bird to Northern Europe. And you can see the serial numbers go up and down. A lot of people think that this is a major error. It's only a minor one, and it's probably common for the actual banknote series. And on the back, we just have a scene from Bornholm. So this will be in winter because there's no actual leaves on the trees. And these are probably being cut back and just regrowth. So they've just been trimmed trees. That's quite a nice banknote. So you get the whole series. It's going to be quite expensive. Okay. Next banknote is an Italian. This one's a 5,000 lira. And here we have, I believe this indicates... Uh, Christopher Columbus traveled to the New World. So we have, I have no idea what animal that is. Actually, it looks like a mythological animal from um, Roman folklore. And these actually look like probably Portuguese ships, just with the actual sails on it. But Christopher Columbus, I think he was the Venetian, so he did come from that part of Italy. Although when he actually sailed there, he was part of the Venetian Republic, so it wasn't there was no place called Italy. And here we have a map of the Middle East. So this is just in the current Saudi Arabia. Italy's up here, you got Spain, North Africa, so Libya, Egypt, Algeria, Morocco, then you go down. And yes, yeah, Somalia is over here. And then you've got India. Probably the eastern part of China. So that's a map currently at the time period. So that's actually quite nice. So these ones are probably at least twenty to thirty dollars. Uh, the exchange rate's about five dollars Australian. You probably can't exchange these at the bank, but they're actually quite nice to get. Okay, the next one has an exchange rate of ten dollars. So it's a hundred shilling of Austria. Uh, if you wanted to buy one of these, you're probably paying. I would say at least twenty to thirty dollars. This one's still crispy. The only drawback is the major fold in the center. So this is probably could be EF condition. It's actually quite nice. And we have Johann Strauss. So he's a composer of music. You have the coat of arms of Austria. The date. So it's a frozen date. So they would have issued these. In the 60s, and here's the printer, or maybe that's the printer. 
and on the back I think that might be Schloss Schönbrunn Schönbrunn okay so Schloss is like a, a castle Schönbrunn I never heard of it before I uh, need to look it up looks like a 1800s type building based on the architecture it could be early 1900s uh, I'm not too sure but it actually looks quite nice and I like it when countries put on their banknotes famous buildings probably not so much people probably plants as well and here's a violin and some note music so that's actually quite nice and the last one we have is a Czechoslovak banknote so this one is the 1945 and it's a 100 and we have a scene from Prague so I'm not too sure of the buildings so 1945 they from memory I think Czechoslovakia issued at least three different 100 uh, crown so they issued this one this will be one from Bradbury Wilkinson printer and there should be one issued by the Russians which is more basic you can see the serial numbers one is smaller one is bigger and here we have a famous a portrait of Mesarik don't know who that is never heard of him before but you can Wikipedia definitely look it up you would definitely have uh, something on him so this one yeah probably at least $20 that's what I've I've checked it out before, uh, and this one's in well circulated condition. So those are new banknotes, and well, most of these I don't have. Okay, I do have these two, but these ones I don't. So I think these are going into the collection. And these ones, I'll check. If they're better than the banknotes I do have, uh, I'll just um, swap them out and resell the other ones. If not, then, well, basically these ones are going for resale. Anyway, I'd say thank you very much. Have an awesome banknote and coin collecting time. Thank you and goodbye.